how long this video is going to be, but probably short. Because I'm going to get cut off by some people. So, um, yeah, I'm in the USS Kavala right now. And it's a World War II submarine. I'm in the forward, uh, the bow of the, sh of the submarine. And these are two are the two forward, four actually, four forward torpedo tubes. Um, so as you can see, there's bunks right here. So the crew actually slept in the torpedo room. But of course, whenever they were being used, they weren't asleep. They were out here helping it, uh, helping launching the torpedoes out. So here's the four torpedo tubes right here. And here's three torpedoes right here. And the crew bunks right there. And this right here is a little hatch right here that's watertight. And I believe, if I'm right, that they would actually, divers would actually be able to go out there and this hatch would close and they would fill all this up with water and then the divers could go out there without sinking the ship. So, yeah. And it has a really tight hole in here. And here's a little shower, I think. Or toilet or something, I don't know. I think it was a shower. And here's a tight hole right here that leads to the forward battery compartment and officer's quarters. And then here is forward battery room. There's different compartments for stuff. A little sun right there, a little sink. Instructions for food handling. Can't open anything though. Of course, pretty cool. Really tight for submarine, but to be honest, for World, for World War II back in the day, that's really was actually pretty good room. And there was a telephone right here, a little window right here to communicate with the little galley. And then this right here, this is a Gatto class submarine by the way. And here's a little chair that you'll be able to just flip up and down to be able to get places. That's pretty cool. Little filing cabinets right here. This I believe is for the officers where they slept. Pretty nice beds as be compared to the ones in front. I would definitely would rather sleep in these. So this is pretty cool that they got to sleep here. This is the officer's water room, man. It's pretty much everything. Nice AC right here, which I don't think they had back in World War II. I'm positive they didn't, but you never know. It's crazy to imagine that this used to go four, 600 feet below the uh, water surface, so that's pretty cool. And they're painting this room right here. Another officer, executive officer, and the first lieutenant engineering officer, navigator's quarters. There's only two beds. Then here's the captain's quarters. The captain had a pretty nice looking compartment. Has his own personal sink. Bed and everything. So that's pretty cool. Of course, I'm not for sure that this window was here. Pretty sure it was blocked off with some, I don't know what you want to call it. But we can actually walk in here. Some more crew sleeping space. I forgot how many crew were able to fit on here. I know there was quite a bit. And they have their own personal sink for these uh, four crew members in here. Pretty cool. There's another very tight hole that you have to go through along with over there so this is one hallway I think there's still about one two more hallways four and this was the ship's office it's had different random stuff in here it had chocolate and stuff toothpaste shaving cream everything and then right here I think is all like the radio and equipment stuff they have radio. The control room. The pump room, the sonar room, plotting room. 
crazy all these gauges and stuff in here. They had to use all of these to make the ship run and stuff. And here it goes even further down. I don't know what's in here. I think engine room or something. I don't know. It goes pretty deep down in there. And then right here is another one of those things I was talking about earlier where oh, this actually goes up to the bridge for the periscope and the tech center. Which, unfortunately, the bridge and everything else is unaccessible, which kind of sucks, but they're just a bunch of random stuff, and then even got a light on, it says Stowel, Stort, I don't know what that means, whoops, that's stuff on my book, shallow depth gauge, deep depth gauge, I'm assuming this is in feet. And this right here, I'm not for sure what it is for, but it does turn. I think this is this controls the depth. How, uh, you know, whenever they dive, dive and resurface, I think that's what it controls. Probably not, but I'm pretty positive that's what it's for. A lot of equipment for the submarine. It's crazy. I don't find your signature right there. Loudspeaker. Really getting tight now. Garbage disposal, which right here, I believe it might have exited the ship when they were at sea, or I'm not for sure. I think it did. I'm not for sure. And then here is, I don't know what room this is, the radio room. A lot of cool looking stuff in here. And this is even tighter than the other two. And here is a crew's mess. An old blender right here. And just a bunch of other stuff. Tells you about their schedule and whatnot. I didn't know that, that the submarine messes received extra funding. So the submarine food was actually the best. I never knew that. I mean, it kind of makes sense, but... That's pretty cool. There's another donation box. I made a donation of two dollars earlier. I'm thinking by them about maybe half a gallon of paint. I don't know how much paint paint costs, but and then here's some mess tables where they could, whenever they weren't working or had free time or whatever, they could come in and they could play checkers, chess, or whatever they wanted to. Cards. And they have a little slot right there for food to come in through. This TV, of course, was not there. They just played DVDs and stuff, of course, but. This is the United States Submarine Force. See if I can find this class that it was in. I don't know. Let's see here. I'm not finding it. Oh, here, I think this might be on here. I'm not finding the Kevlar on here. I have no clue where it's at. Huh. I don't know. I, forgot. I don't know. I couldn't find it on there. But here was the uh, main crew sleeping space. Let's say there's about, I don't know, I'd say maybe like 20 beds in here. These are not very comfortable too. These mattresses, they don't seem very comfortable. Not very spacey either, and what sucks is, oh wait, no, they, they could get it out on the other side. Whoa, hello. There's a big hatch right there. This one, I guess someone stole the mattress or something. That's not very good. Another AC that I do not believe was there, but could have been. There probably were ACs on here. Make them a little more. Oh, wait, no, I don't think there was. I don't know. Medical locker. A bunch of other random lockers and stuff for the crew. And then all their personal lockers are on each side. You can see right there, there's a few along this wall. And then here's a really, really tight passageway. Oxygen breathing apparatus. 
so in case something happened with the oxygen. And this looks like it is some kind of washroom or something. Bathroom maybe. Uh -huh. Nothing right here. Go in. This was the engine room, I do believe now. This is the actual engine room. This definitely looks like an engine. Yeah, main engine. 16 cylind cyl uh, cylinders. Read that if you want. Whole bunch of engine stuff. And then stuff they can repair if needed to. You can tell like how worn out that this is from all the years of being used during World War II. Crazy. How you had that song worn out. There's just a bunch of other random stuff in here. There's some stuff around this side. It's another. Oh, this might be the tightest hole. It's crazy how many portholes that they have to have in here. In case the submarine starts to sink, they have to have it all closed off. There's a little bell right there, I guess, in case they come under attack. There's a whole bunch of other stuff here in the engine room. A Winston engine. Pretty cool. Turn around stuff, exhaust. Cool. Right here, engine induction. I wonder if I can pull this. Oh, I did. Don't want to go back to this place. There. I accidentally pulled this out show again. There. Oh, now it's not going back up this thing. There. There it is. There. Looks like here is. I thought this was true space because of the tile, but no, it is electrical stuff. This machine, this is super tight. I'm assuming this must have been really loud. Whatever it was in use. Really loud. And here's more. This actually controlled the engines, I believe. This is what all, all the stuff is below. And this is the main control room where they steered the ship and everything. Yeah, you could just, yeah, basically that's just how it worked. I can't explain it very well, but all the throttles and whatnots. Read that real quick if you want. And here is the back of the room, the exit. Here's a little sink right here, more crew space. Look at this, this is crazy. They have to be sitting around the top of the torpedo, even though you can't even fit in there probably. But I'm pretty sure these probably were pushed out. It's really unbelievable how big these torpedoes are. Here is the rear torpedo room. They had four torpedo tubes back here. And then here is, that's what it looks like all the way down there. Pretty crazy. <laughs> So that is it of this tour in here of the USS Kabbalah. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys later. Bye.